Well, hello everyone and welcome to the very first edition of Jermaine Toyota of Sarasota's Friday Football Fever. It is kickoff classic week on the Sun Coast. Last chance for teams to kind of fine tune things before the games really count. And we will start, as always, with our game of the week. Pair of new coaches with some programs that have been under a lot of stress lately. Booker at Braden River, first quarter. Brandon Lee flings one on the run to Dylan Lee. He fires his way into the end zone for a touchdown there. Nice dive. Yes, sir. That is a touchdown. Booker's possession here. Alex Riddle, QB keeper on a broken play up the middle. Look at him slicing and dicing his way for a first down there. Might have lost the ball, but he recovers anyway. Second quarter, it's Riddle to Mike Jones. This guy's an athlete. Jones over the middle. Little shake and bake outside. That's a first down there. More from the Tornadoes. Fumble on the snap here, but Marlon Mack recently transferred from Sarasota High School, and this guy can play. Dancing around, picks it up, makes a first down out of it on the sideline there. Later in the drive, you got to go to Mack again. Look at the guy. Goes inside, cuts outside. Nice little block there. Beats a tackle. That's a touchdown. Good effort from Marlon Mack. He's going to be a player for Booker. Braden River would respond. End of a nice drive. Leak. Touchdown there, number 25. We don't have him on the roster. Wish I could tell you his name. Braden River ends up winning this ball game 20 to 12. Want to introduce you to the newest member of our team, new sports reporter Amber Stidham, and she got to check out this game. Kind of an interesting matchup, Amber. A couple of new head coaches. This game was pretty tight. Tell us about our game of the week. Yeah, it was a great game, Adam. Two brand new, very young head coaches got their first taste of high school football. And it started out a little bit rough for the players. It almost seemed like they couldn't hang on to the ball at first. One fumble after another, but once the game got going, Braden River senior quarterback Eric Schopacker really showed that he is not just a threat on his feet, but he also made a couple of really nice long passes. And Booker got a lot of help from running backs Marlon Mack and Mike Jones, who proved that they have of lightning speed out on that field. I caught up with both coaches after the game. Here's what they had to say. The, you know, as far as the, the fan support and those things to, you know, come out on top, um, albeit a kickoff classic and those things, there were some things that we can definitely clean up and those things, but as far as a kickoff classic, you know, it's always good to come out on top whenever you're competing. The discipline. The discipline right. is a ball game, you know right. what I mean? So we beat ourselves. We right. was in the game. Right, sure. Turnovers. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you look at on our running backs, open field, lose the ball, they get the ball, then they drive on us. Now both coaches look just as excited as their players did on the side of the field. And I must say, both of them are using this tonight, tonight's game as a really a learning experience for the next week's game that actually counts. Back to you, Adam. All right, good job out there. Thanks and welcome to Amber Stidham, our new sports reporter. Let's move on. Palmetto at Venice. This was a battle between two of the only state-ranked teams in the Suncoast area. We're going to start with Kale Yautzi. He's the guy that's going to replace Grant Flessner, and it doesn't seem to be any kind of a problem for the Indians here. Look at Yautzi go, 7-3 Venice at that point. Terry Polk's going to replace Danny Dillard as the running back. He's also a good-looking young player. We saw flashes of this from him last season. That run led to a touchdown. Venice got out to a huge lead, and to be honest, Palmetto did not look good early, and then came Joshua Hicks. Huge run here. Look at Hicks. He was a stud last season. Looks for more of the same this year. Touchdown there. It looked ugly early. Venice was going to roll, but Tigers made a game of it still. Venice wins this ball game. 24 to 23 is your final. So really nice kickoff classic win for the Indians. All right, Sarasota went up to Lakewood Ranch. Mustangs coming off another playoff season. This game was all Sarasota. Hunter DeWitt about to get crushed. Still finds Dale Dunn, who turns it into a really long gain up the sidelines. He's tripped up. Sarasota would cap the drive, though, with a little handoff to Rod Tillis. Look at the shake and bake, the cuts, the moves. It's fancy. Gets himself into the end zone with a high step. 35-0. Sailors just cruising in this ball game. Kind of strange. Lakewood Ranch had a few little highlights. One came on defense. Jake Pierce recovers the fumble. Mustangs are in business. So on the offensive possession, Chad Rex rolls out. He hits Therese Davis for a nice gain. 
Drive would stall before the end zone, though. Sarasota, how about this? A huge boost. They win this game 42-7. to Did not expect that kind of score. Charlotte, state ranked in Tarpon Springs East, is supposed to be good, but this is kind of a head-scratcher. Tarpons go down hard, losing 27-7. to We'll see how Charlotte responds next week when the games count. How about Riverview hosting St. Petersburg High School? A couple early stumbles in this one for the Rams there. Nice run from Karan Higdon, but it was called back for holding here. I really wish I could have showed you the beginnings of these plays because there were some good ones. Green Devils on the board, touchdown Maurice Hemingway. Rams had a nice early drive though. Dominic Marino, QB keeper up the sidelines. Then a great catch from Higdon a little later and watch him crush the corner low of the shoulder, young fella. Rams went on to get a nice win. 21 to 16 is your final here. All right, I'll call a quick timeout, but don't worry, there is plenty more high school football coming your way. The number one team in the nation, Manatee, had a final tune-up. More Friday Football Fever coming up. You're watching Friday Football Fever on SNN Local News 6. All right, welcome back to Friday Football Fever. Let's just get right back into it. The number one ranked team in all the land. Manatee should have had no trouble with Seminole Osceola tonight up in Bradenton. First play of the game, Kelvin McKnight is gonna spark the season in the right way. How about a 90 yard kickoff return for a touchdown for the number one team in the nation. I talked to some of these guys a couple weeks ago. They wanna end the season with that mythical national championship. That's a good way to start. And then came a big, Bruising run from a big boy, Marquise Dossi, up the middle, 14 to zero. Canes just steamrolling in the first. Seminoles, Seminole rather, had a few flashes in this game. Andrew Maddock finds Dylan Scheidel first down there, but really, when you play the number one team in the nation, that's a tall order for any team. This one was all Manatee. Canes think Trayvon Walters is gonna be the guy to replace Leon Allen, and he looks good there. Manatee wins 49-14. How about Lemon Bay going up to Northport? Take on the Bobcats, second quarter. Lemon Bay, fourth down. Leonard Faison at the 15-yard line. He takes it outside. He's gone. Go on, big fella. He's a big boy, too. All the way in there for the touchdown. Northport Bobcats would miss the extra point, but uh, you know what happens down there. They do the push-ups for the touchdown. Bobcats get the ball back on first down. Quarterback Trenton White. Going to dump it off to Faison, and uh, that's a pretty good idea because he's dodging tackles left and right. Gets some good picks there. He breaks free for the end zone. Northport goes on to win this ball game easily. 34-7 to is your final score. All right. How about Port Charlotte? All over North Fort Myers. 38-0, blanking the Red Knights. Nice start to the season for the Pirates. Let's move on. Southeast starts the season ranked in the state polls. Made the trip to Fort Myers, taking on the Green Wave. Second quarter, Southeast, the sack. And they're going to pick up the ball as well. You know those Seminoles can play some defense. That's a big defensive play there. 22-0, Seminoles firmly in control of this game. But I got to tell you, Fort Myers came back to win it. 23 to 22. We'll see how much that affects Southeast in the long run. How about ODA? Rough opener for them. 41 to 12, they lose to Berkeley Prep. ODA is at St. Pete Catholic to open the regular season next week. Bayshore hosted Largo High School. Packers Juwan Bryant. Hand off to Henry Brown. They may be related, not sure. Pushes through three guys for a touchdown there. Later, it's Brown floating one to Raheem Harvey. Look at this big receiver. Just go up and snatch the ball. That's a touchdown there. Largo cruises in this game, winning 47-16 to is your final. Well, as far as kickoff classic scores go, couldn't be much better for Mooney at Bradenton Christian. 44 zip. Mooney opens the regular season at LaBelle High School next week. Also want to let you know, Mark Barron had a 22-yard interception return for a touchdown. 20-7 Bucks led at the half, and they win 30-28, a win for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in preseason game number three. That's pretty good. Well, that's it for your kickoff classic highlights. And when SNN Local News Friday football fever continues, we take a look at the games with uh, Herald Tribune sports writer Doug Fernandez. Stick around. You're watching Friday Football Fever on SNN Local News 6. Go Bears! Oh, 
it's the best part of the oh, night. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's the best. It's our first time with. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Welcome nice. back, Doug Fernandez, Herald Tribune sports columnist extraordinaire. And Doug was at uh, the Booker Braden River game. Uh, kind of an interesting game here. A couple of schools that have had some really tough things going on with them lately, and a couple of brand new uh, head coaches. Uh, what did you think tonight? Um, a lot of mistakes, uh, a lot of good play. You mentioned first-year head coaches, uh, Kurt Bradley's out of Brain River, who's the son of Phil Bradley, mm -hmm. a former quarterback from my alma mater, University of Missouri. How about that? And, uh, and of course, Johnny Jones. A very tumultuous last two or three weeks for Booker. Carlos Woods was supposed to be the head coach, right. backed away right on the practice, supposed to start. They bring back Johnny Jones, who used to be a Booker player. Uh, a lot of turmoil, but tonight, uh, Brain River won t 20 to 12. I think both teams combined for like seven, eight fumbles, a lot of drop passes, Sloppy. what you might expect. Right. But if you're Booker and you're Johnny Jones, you're going to give the ball to Marlon Mack. Oh, Marlon and Mack. Jones. How about him transferring over from Sarasota High School? I thought he was fantastic last season for the Sailors, and now he's going to help the uh, Tornadoes a ton. Well, Johnny Jones, I think, knows enough to get these guys in space, matchups, which is what, as you know, football is all about. And Marlon Mack's going to run over some people. Mike Jones is going to run around some people. And Alex Riddle will make some people miss, too. They just can't fumble the ball, fumble the ball six times. I think they had 90 yards and penalties. It's all, it's all fixable stuff, though, if you're Johnny Jones. Yeah, which is good because Booker, you know, deserves a little luck on their <laughs> side, though. So uh, Tornadoes could be decent this season. Some questionable scores tonight. This is some strange stuff. Venice and Palmetto. Uh, Palmetto down huge early on, comes back. And uh, Venice still gets the win by one. But Palmetto, state-ranked. It's very strange that they wouldn't be more competitive early on. Well, they lost Eric Miller. Remember the quarterback yeah. last Tr year? Trent Miller, right? Tr Trent Miller. Yep. He really accentuated that offense. Yep. I was surprised by that Southeast score. I, I, don't, I yeah, don't hear any Southeast. of these scores that they can't hold on to that lead. Uh, you're right. You're going to bounce back from that sort of stuff in kickoff but the, classics. Yeah, these kickoff classics are interesting, though. Some coaches take them very seriously. Others kind of say, well, we'll just see what happens. It's not a big deal. No, they're not. Uh, kind of vanilla offensively. Uh, but uh, you want to get a look at some young players, and I think Braden River and Booker did both of those things tonight. You know, if you want to touch briefly on what Carlos Woods did, I know you wrote a piece on that. It really bothered me what he did. Well, uh, apparently uh, the day before practice was to start, he told Booker that he had to tend to a sick child, and his child is sick, but then three days later he takes a job at Delaware State, and the Booker principal didn't know. She had to hear it from me, and that really upset her over at Booker. Boy, you really hope he didn't use his sick child to get out As of a job excuse, and not really he didn't want. Truth. All right, right, Doug Fernandez, thank you so much. All right, that'll wrap things up for this week's edition of Friday Football Fever. Now check out htpreps.com or the Herald Tribune for more coverage of these games. There's more local news and weather just ahead. Stick around.